What is Shiatsu? And no, it's not a small dog. But if you wanted to know more about this style of Japanese massage, then you're in the right place. Hey guys, it's Emily from the Shiatsu and Somatics channel, bringing you tips and information to support your health and well-being goals. In today's video, we're looking at what is Shiatsu? How does it work? Who's it for? And how will it help? And stick around to the end for a bonus self-care tip that you can try. So what is Shiatsu? Shiatsu is a form of bodywork that was originally developed in Japan as a therapy to promote health and well-being. And nowadays it's taught and practiced throughout the world. The name Shiatsu literally translates as the Japanese meaning of finger pressure, Shi Atsu. And historically it derives from a licensed profession known as Anma, meaning massage, which was originally reserved for those that were blind or sight impaired. And as a brief aside, I think that this really touches on the profound ability we have in this tactile sense and to use touch as a form of communication. It's interesting as when we're born of all the senses, touch is our most developed. It's really our first language. And yet later as adults, somehow we can come to place a lot less importance or emphasis on it in our day-to-day -day lives. But back to our history, what we can see throughout many Eastern cultures and the history of Oriental medicine is a strong emphasis on touch-based or massage practices that sit alongside other aspects like acupuncture, herbal medicine, or even movements, practices like Tai Chi and Qigong, all the different pillars of health and well-being. And while Shiatsu is bodywork that supports our musculoskeletal system, what makes Shiatsu different to a Western-style massage is that it is also incorporating working along the meridian pathways and acupressure points, similar to acupuncture. Some people even describe Shiatsu as being like acupuncture without the needles. And it's this model of oriental medicine theory that can help the practitioner to plan, guide, or tailor the session approach to the individual client. And of course, there are many different styles and lineages that can be studied. So the way each practitioner works may be quite unique or different. But it will always come back to a holistic approach of supporting balance and harmony with our internal and external environment. So while it's working on the physical body, it's also aiming to support the whole person, the overall body, mind and spirit. So what does this mean on a practical sense? Well, yes, there is this fascinating theory and frameworks behind it, but it is simply about helping a person to find or come into or maintain a sense of balance, that feeling of well-being, which is something we're all juggling to find as humans in a world that is changing so rapidly around us and the bodies that we live in. As a form of bodywork, Shiatsu is helping to support healthy circulation, reducing muscle tension and promoting relaxation, that parasympathetic or rest and digest state that assists healing and well-being. And for me, Shiatsu is just something that feels good. It leaves me feeling centered, connected and strong from the inside out. It's kind of like feeling at home in yourself. And that's a really cool gift to give yourself and then the world around you. So what might you expect in a session? Usually shiatsu is given on a futon on the floor. Occasionally it might be on a massage table. The client remains fully clothed, so it's always a good idea to wear loose, comfy clothing. The pressure can be light or firm, but it shouldn't be very painful as pain is a contractive force and we're wanting to allow and encourage that flow movement. Shiatsu practitioners may use different techniques and styles based on their training and traditions. They may use their thumbs, the palms of their hands, feet and knees. They might also hold acupressure points or incorporate stretches. They might discuss other therapies like cupping or moxa if it's appropriate. Each shiatsu session 
is likely to be a bit different as it's tailored to the individual and how they present at that particular day and time. The practitioner might also use assessment skills to help determine the best approach. And this can include asking some questions at the beginning. They may feel the wrist pulse or palpate around the hara, a map of the abdomen. Clients often comment on how relaxed they feel at the end of a session. And so where possible, allowing for some quiet time and space afterwards can be really beneficial. So what evidence is there that this works? I get it. When we start mentioning things like meridians or the flow of chi, then people can tune out and dismiss it as being a bit woo-woo or out there. I get it and I also encourage that until you've experienced it to suspend one's disbelief. And it is true that because shiatsu has come from this Eastern medicine framework and it's always adapted to the variables of being human, then there hasn't been as much clinical research into its efficacy from that perspective of the Western medical model. But this is beginning to change as research studies take place. And this was a similar situation with acupuncture when it arrived in the West, which now has a growing field of research and evidence around it. And in some of the upcoming videos, I hope to shed some light on these ideas of meridians and chi so it's a little less mysterious. And that's a great reason to subscribe so you never miss the next installment. So how do I know if shiatsu is for me? Well, you can only try it and see. You are the best evidence. Stay curious. Notice how you feel before and after. How do you feel in the days following? Your sleep, energy, digestion, resilience. For some people, shiatsu will really resonate and be quite a different experience to an oil-based massage. For other people, it might just be an hour of relaxing body work. To give you an idea, here's a few examples of how some clients use and benefit from shiatsu. For some people, it will be part of their regular health and well-being maintenance. They might come fortnightly or monthly. In women's health, it can support cycles and transitions such as the menstrual cycle, pregnancy, menopause. For some people going through a process of grief, shiatsu can be a powerful support alongside this. And some people might find it helpful alongside talk-based therapies that they may already be doing, as the body has its own language and way that it integrates. And of course, it can just help soften the stresses of daily life and relieve muscle tension that we all accumulate and hold. Shiatsu can support a myriad of presentations and life stages. And for those that might be highly sensitive or overstimulated by skin touch, shiatsu can be an alternative as a combination of broad deep pressure through clothing helps to create a container. In my practice, I have the privilege of working with all ages and stages of life. And this includes a specialized area for babies and children. And this is such an important developmental time and topic on its own so we'll look at this in another video ahead. So before we get into our bonus tip, we've established that shiatsu is not a small dog. Equally cool though. Shiatsu is a form of bodywork, originally developed in Japan as a therapy to support health and well-being. It works along the meridians and acupressure points in the body, and it sits within the framework of oriental medicine. This makes it a little bit different to a Western style massage, and it's done also through clothing. While it's working on the physical, it also aims to support the whole of the person. Touch is one of our five senses, and we need it throughout life. And Shiatsu offers conscious, respectful, therapeutic touch. And in my view, it feels really good. So you made it to the end, which means bonus time. And in case that was a lot, let's learn a quick way to refresh. And you can do that right now, sitting here. One of the fascinating things in Oriental Medicine is all the different maps and interpretations of the body. And the ears are interesting. 
Some liken the shape of the ears to the kidneys, while in auricular therapy, we have a map of an upside down baby with points that correspond to the whole of the body. The base or the earlobes represent the head and the brain. And then the spine is the curl around. So we begin with a little massage starting at the base of the earlobes, just working between the thumb and the forefinger. And then traveling up the spine, around the curl, all the way to the top. Giving the top a little rub, working around the folds, being gentle as we want to keep the ears attached. And then slowly working our way to the earlobes again. And as you do this, just notice how you feel. Maybe the head and the eyes are feeling clear and refreshed. Or maybe you just have really nice warm ears. I'm sure you'll let me know below. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a shiatsu thumbs up. Take care and I'll see you next time.